If you cannot stop looking until you are 100% sure you found the best choice in terms of buying a new device, a piece of clothing or furniture or even an experience, you are a maximizer. And if you are satisfied with your decision that passes a good enough threshold, you are a satisficer. For example, one might think about buying a new iPhone. The why? It's new, shiny, having crisp visuals pumped into the brand and marketing behind it. But if you take it and compare it to its one-year-old brother, the specs will probably not be a huge upgrade for the casual user. And even though it might feel like this is the best option on the market right now, the best thing you can get, having say 100 value points, the second best option is up there as well, having say 99.5 value points. And in general, what maximizers do is they spend their time, money and resources to gain that 0.5 uh, value points without gaining that much of a mind-blowing utility overall. But now the tricky thing comes along, because once they've reached that 100% goal, 100% value point gain, there's no way up anymore. So the feeling of satisfaction the maximizer will experience is relatively small compared to, say, a satisficer who got himself a jump upgrade from an iPhone he bought seven years ago to, say, something a three years old version. And if you're living in an abundant world as you have more money, more fame and start accumulating more stuff in your life, your expectations as maximizer will grow as well. And the satisficer usually ends up being much happier in life. Thus, the result of the mindless consumption of the maximizer might not be equal in general to a long-lasting gain in happiness. And we have a lot of studies showing that uh, those who won the lottery at some point stated that there was no long gain in happiness overall. And finding the best option in most cases is quite buggy, as this will not bring you a steady dose of subjective pleasure and subjective happiness in the long run. And there's a great book on this called The Paradox of Choice, where the author offers us sufficient data and real-world examples in order to show us that too much choice actually makes us unhappy. I believe that this is kind of related to the fact that nowadays we have quite a lot of choices at our disposal. And I believe that we are all maximizers and all satisficers in the same time. But maintaining the balance is the tricky thing we need to do. We must not fall in the extremes. And I have some overall tips I would want to give to the maximizer in me. And the first thing I want to say is that I want to sort of like learn to design my environment so that I won't have to face that many decisions. Uh, on a daily basis. You know, simple things such as not going to a huge shopping center with hundreds of shops and things to pick and choose from, and also learning to be satisfied with what I already have. The second thing is learning how to accept my initial decision whenever I have to just take a decision and sort of not overthink it too much, as this can lead me oftentimes into a just like deep rabbit hole and really not sweating over the triviality of small daily decisions such as what type of butter or water should I buy today. And the third thing is just like learning to embrace the power of saying good enough in the many aspects of daily life such as again when buying a device, a piece of clothing, a piece of furniture. And I believe that all of these mental frameworks will teach me in the end how to be more decisive, more consistent and why not happier while also investing in learning how to love limitations and doing what I can with what I have wherever I am in life. So my rule nowadays is not to change anything that's not quite bugging me, that's not adding friction to my life. So if I have like an older generation phone, I will not change that phone until it actually breaks because phones nowadays are all the same, well almost. So I don't want to maximize everything in terms of that, because I don't need that. My phone fulfills my needs. And simply acknowledging that I'm truly living in an abundant world. And I do agree that we are not all 100% full maximizers or satisficers, but society and most of the time the academia pushes us toward maximizing our patterns, our behaviors, our resources. We have too many options and we want to make sure we get our hands on the best of the best. And if you're living in society, you will probably be on the hedonic treadmill for the entirety of your life to some degree. But that doesn't mean that you cannot tweak your habits or patterns of behavior so that you can, in the end, improve your life.